Selamat datang to class UDPL 2423 Maritime Economic and Policy. In this short video session, I'm going to discuss with you the beauty of maritime economics, whereby it's an economic where it's combined the area of land and sea. How does the combination of between these two elements, land and sea, connected at the port, create an economic environment to a nation and across the globe? In this class today, I'm going to talk to you about ocean vessels. This session, we're going to discuss uh, briefly on ocean vessels. You might have been to maritime port or any port near to your hometown. You will see there a lot of vessels at the wharf. Have you ever wondered what are the types of the vessels? What is their names? What is their purpose? Hmm. You only know there's only an ocean vessels. Well, Today, I'm going to give to you a briefly introduction on a few ocean vessels that sails across the seven seas. Are you ready? Okay, let's start the session. In this session, I only will discuss a few of ocean of vessels, ocean vessels, I'm sorry, that sails across the sea. You may be familiar with container vessels, but a part of container vessels, there are a lot of it. There are we going to look at bark cargo vessels. Also, I'm going to discuss with all of you about specialized vessels. For example, the animal carrier, the heavy leaf, and lastly, a pipe laying vessels. Are you ready, class? Let's start with container vessel. You may see the container vessels. It's like in the pictures. Why is called a container? Because you can see here, I'm moving the cursor to the vessels. There's a lot of container on board the vessels. That's why we call it container vessels. The beauty of these vessels, you can see in the picture here, is can carry a lot of container. For example, in this picture, this is the E-class from MERS line. This vessel usually have a direct and specific route. It mostly we call it a liner. It has a specific purpose that is to carry a container from one destination to another and it is stopped into a few main port along the lake, along the route. For example, this is the M the E class from MERS. Usually it sails from Singapore to Europe. On her voyage, it might stop at Port Klang. After that it will go to Mumbai and after Mumbai goes to the Suez Canal and lastly to Rotterdam. So the beauty of this kind of vessel, you can see the structure itself has been designed to hold huge quantity of compact cargoes in a container. So if you are trying to send like a flat TV, flat televisions or electronic products, from Pelabuhan Kelang to Amsterdam. You can put your cargo in a container, put it, stuff it in a container, and that container will be sent to the nearest port at Port Klang, and lastly, it will sail on board of this MERS line, and directly, it will sail to Amsterdam. The process of sending the cargo in container is called containerization. 
in a container, we measure it in terms of TEU. The TEU is a short form to the words 20 footer equivalent units. There are two types of containers available in the market. First of all, we have the 20 footer. This is called 1 TEU or just TEU. And another is a 40 footer that we call 2 TEUs. So, when you see a port handle a lot of TEUs, that means the port handle a lot of container. The beauty of containerization is that it has lowered the shipping expense and decreased the shipping times. So, indirectly, it helps to flourish the international trade. Next, I will talk about bulk cargo vessel. The differences between bulk cargo and container vessel is that bulk cargo don't carry any container. You can see from the picture here, this is a D-class vessel from Spitoff. It has no containers and it has crane on board of it. The characteristic of bulk cargo is that it has the vessel itself has been designed to carry it for certain cargoes. Mostly, the vessel itself have a clear main deck and a machinery room with a superstructure. On board of the vessel, it has hatches with restricted access to hold a cargoes on the deck. So, you can see this cargo only carry dry goods. For example, of dry goods are steel pipes, steel coil, mace, cement, cement clinkers, sugar, and others. The beauty of bulk cargo is that it can load, carry, and discharge any kind of cargoes as long as it is non-liquid cargo. So here, in this picture, I'm going to show you there are two types of bulk vessels. One with a crane. In maritime, we call it a derrick. A vessel with a derrick, for example, the S-type from Spitoff here, is a break bulk vessel. You can see it has one, two, three cranes. And another one is a dry is a vessels without a crane. This is we call a bulk vessel. The differences is that the bulk vessel don't have crane. Most of the cargo that being loaded in the break bulk vessels consists of uh, steel plate, steel pipes, woods, and other products that can be loaded with a crane. However, for bulk vessels, most of the cargo being loaded into these vessels consists of sugar, Mace, soybeans, cements, and also palm canal expellent. So you can see the different and the purpose of each of these two vessels. Okay, how are we going so far? Can we go to the next vessel? <coughs> the next vessel I'm going to share with you is a specialized vessel that we call animal transporter. You can see from the pictures here, it is also known as a livestock carrier. The purpose of animal transporter is exclusively to transport large number of live animals from a certain point, from a certain voyage, for example from uh, Fremantle, Western Australia, to Pasir Gudang, Johor. So the voyage may take about five days. As same as 
human being, animals need to be fed. So when we are sending alive animals to this vessel, we also need to give them proper meals and water. Apart from that, there are two types of livestock carriers or the animal carrier that available in the market. First of all, we have the open livestock vessel carrier. You can see when it says open, there is no wall surrounding the vessels. So the ventilation system is based on the natural wind from the sea. Another one is the closed livestock carrier vessels. You can see from these white vessels here, it has walls. So, for this kind of vessel, we, it is required to have a ventilation system. So now you know that animals can be transported from one destination to another. Okay, here are examples of livestock carriers, the open livestock carriers. You can see the animal pens are installed with open decks. Yes, and then during the sales, we need to provide nutrients, continuous natural ventilations. So the natural ventilation is based on the wind from the sea. <coughs> However, for the closed livestock carriers, the ventilation system mostly dependent on mechanical system that's been controlled by the vessels. So it is a so it is a computerized system of ventilating. Next, I would like to show with you about a heavy leaf vessels. You can see from this picture a heavy leaf is like one vessels can carry a lot a lot of body of ships the purpose of this vessel for example a vessel blue marlin from dockwise here is to move a very large huge and extraordinary weight of equipment this can be like drilling rigs and also ships There are two types of high I'm sorry, there are two types of heavy lift vessels available in the market. The first one, as you can see from this picture, the dogwise blue marlin is known as submersible vessel. This vessel have a concept of flow on and flow off. For example, if we have a very huge floating platform that to be tra that has been developed in uh, Chang in sorry in Tua Singapore, and it is need to be transported to North America. So this vessel is the right one to be for us to pick to do the delivery. The how it works? The Blue Marlin will sub wheels submerge into the water to allow the heavy oil platform or rigs to be placed on top of it. One, it been placed on the right position. The vessel will emerge again to the water and after the lashing has been done, it will sails from to us to North America. The second one is a vessels that have cranes. This vessel mostly for is used to deliver high I'm sorry, this vessel is used to deliver a very heavy equipment but still it can be lived with a crane however the crane from this vessel has capacity to lift a 
cargo which might be equivalent to 500 tons or more. For example, here you can see a vessel from Beluga is used to carry out uh, loading of project cargo, for example, like superstructures, for example, like pressure vessels on board from Kuantan to Jebel Ali. So do, these are the two different type of ocean vessels that we, sorry, they are two type of heavily vessels that we have exposed to you. Lastly, another specialized vessel I would like to share is the pipeline, pipe laying construction vessels. You can see from the picture here, this is an all sea solitaire. A pipe laying ocean vessel has one single purpose that is to join the pipes, to join the steel pipes inside the vessels and to lay down this pipe from the oil well in the middle of the ocean to the processing plant at the shore. So you can see it's just like combining a lot of steel pipe to make it like a long hose from the oil well to the shore. So this pipeline vessel mostly being used in the subsea construction, mostly in the oil and gas. And the number of people on board of this vessel is so huge. They might be up from 500 to 1,000 people. So, those are some of the vessels that I have shared with you today. Again, if there are any question, please do not hesitate to inform me and hope to meet with you again. My name is Muhammad Azam, Muhammad Azam Din. Terima kasih for watching.